Hey guys, JD here. So I started having a issue with my ski and I've taken a lot of pains to diagnose it. And I've had the entire thing apart. And so what I've isolated it down to is the throttle body assembly itself. All right, so this right here, our throttle body. And I'm gonna show you on a 2022 plus model how to diagnose whether or not that throttle body is functioning properly. So I did a video before on diagnosing common issues on a ski and obviously you want to check all those first. Once you've checked pretty much everything you can, then you got to start checking things like the throttle body itself, right? So I have a new wire harness. This was part of the wire harness recall. So I knew that the harness itself wasn't the issue. And after going back and forth, I determined that the throttle body itself, which you could see right here, was creating an issue. So this issue presented as an intermittent hesitation that would occur basically if I was stopped and I squeezed the throttle trigger, uh, sometimes it would go to full throttle and then it started just kind of like having like a hiccup, right? Like it would, it would not accelerate and then all of a sudden it would accelerate. And once in a while, if I was going along and I let off the throttle and then squeezed it again, it would kind of stutter a bit. And after checking absolutely everything, the throttle body uh, is what I've narrowed down. And today I'm gonna show you the diagnostic procedure to check your throttle body um, and, and rule that as an issue. So what you're gonna need is a Kawasaki service manual. Obviously, if you don't have one, then you can follow my instructions in this video, which go uh, directly from the manual. So here we're looking at the self-diagnosis section of the manual. Typically, you'd throw a code, code 11 here. My ski does not have any codes. And so you could have a problem and, it, and for some reason not have a code. And that, of course, would mean that it would be almost impossible for a dealer to diagnose this. They don't have the skill or the time to go through and test everything. So we're gonna conduct a series of tests here. I've already done all these tests. I'm just gonna show you again how to do them so that if you're having a hesitation or a stutter in your ski and you've ruled out all of the top contenders, then um, this is what you need to do to check your throttle body on a 2022 plus Ultra 310. Okay, so here's our throttle position sensor that's integrated into the throttle body unit itself. So we're gonna check the output voltage and then we're gonna check the input voltage, right? So the output voltage is the voltage coming out of the throttle body back to the ECU. And the input voltage is the voltage going into the throttle body from our ECU. Now I have the luxury of having a spare ECU and having that spare ECU allows me to conduct various tests if I have an issue like this. Okay, so to start with, we're gonna need a multimeter. All right, and then you're gonna need needle adapters. And those are actually gonna go, you can see where I've got them there. Those are going into these little little pins in the ECU right there. So here's pin 74, 67, and 18. These are the three that we're gonna need to access in order to conduct these tests. So test one here, we're gonna put our positive lead on the green wire, terminal 67, and we're gonna put our negative lead on the white wire, terminal 74. Okay, so I've got those. Um, once you've got that connected, then you're gonna turn on the ignition of the ski. And um, basically you can see right now that that's reading 0.79 volts, okay? Now you can see that the spec here is 0.37 to 0.63 volts at idle. So that means at rest with the throttle plate not moving. So you can see right away that, that uh, the bottom range of my throttle position sensor is, is out of range. Okay, so that's not good. So we're gonna move on to the second uh, test here. It says um, at full throttle, we should be at 4.37 to 4.63 volts. Okay, so now I'm gonna squeeze the trigger and we're only at about 3.2 volts. Now, obviously you wanna ensure that your battery is fully charged before conducting this test. I have confirmed that. So we could see right away that for test one, I am out of range. So that right away is indicating a problem with my throttle body. So we're not just gonna call it there though, we're gonna continue to go through the process here. So now let's look at test number two. So for test number two, you're gonna leave your negative lead connected to that white wire on terminal 74. And we're now gonna connect our positive lead to the black lead on terminal 18. 
which is right here. So before you do anything else, you want to disconnect the ignition. All right. And then we're going to come here to our ECU. And I'm going to remove, I'm trying to do this. So we're going to go ahead and remove this pin here. These are what these needle adapters look like. Okay. So now we're going to insert that on the other side of our ECU right here on pin 18, which is a black lead. And you can see from looking at this that that is four spaces from the right. Okay. All right, so we've got our needle connectors connected to the ECU. Uh, so you can see that's terminal 18, our positive lead, and terminal 74, our white lead. That's the same as the previous test. And I'll give you a good look at this here. So 18, you're going to count four spaces from the right. It's the fifth one. It's a black wire. Okay, and then 74 is the only white wire in that row. Okay, so now you're going to turn on your ignition. Here's my key. All right. So now for test number two, at idle, you should be between 2.37 and 2.63 volts. So again, I'm out of range, 2.78 volts. Now let's try full throttle. Full throttle, our range was 4.52 to 4.78. So I'm actually in range for that one, interestingly enough. So basically what we've determined right now is that we're out of range for both of these values. For this value, we're out of range, but then at this full throttle value, we're actually in range, which is very interesting. Okay, so um, if the reading is out of standard, check the input voltage. Okay, so here is our input voltage. We're going to do that text test next. So you can see that 70, pin 74 is going to remain the same for your negative lead. Okay, and then you're going to switch your positive lead to the red wire on terminal 21. And that's going to allow us to determine our input voltage to the throttle body. That will be coming from the ECU. Um, and that um, I don't expect to have an issue because um, I do have a good wire harness and there's no problem with my ECU. So let's get our positive lead into terminal 21 right there. All right, so I've got my needle adapter in into uh, pin 21. This negative lead is still in pin 74. And you can see my voltage is 4.983, and our range is supposed to be 4.75 to 5.25. So this part checks out good. So let's see what they tell you to do. If the reading is out of the standard, replace the ECU. Okay, so we don't have to do that. So what we could determine from this test is that our throttle body is receiving the correct voltage. However, the values that are being returned to the ECU at, um, at idle, so at neutral position and at full throttle, are not correct. So this means that there's an internal electrical issue with the throttle body and it needs to be replaced. So if you are having a stumble or hesitation, there's about 20 things you wanna check at any given time. Now I've done videos on covering some of the basics but I'm going to give you a quick rundown of everything I checked before I finally determined that the throttle body was the issue. So the first thing you're going to want to check is all your supercharger ducting. Make sure there's no cracks in the ducts and that the hose clamps are tight. I actually had a broken hose clamp that I thought was the problem. Turns out that was too easy. You want to check your BOV. You want to check your relief valve and its vacuum line. And you want to check the input and output voltage of the MAP sensor. You want to make sure the MAP sensor itself is clear and there's no damage to the feed hose from the manifold. You want to check the resistance of your temp sensors. There are multiple temp sensors on this engine. You have an air temp sensor here. There's a water temp sensor on the bottom of the intercooler. There's another water temp sensor right here. And then there's an oil temp sensor on the front of the engine. You also want to check the resistance of your camshaft sensor, which is right under there and your crankshaft sensor and your primary pulsing coil pickup, which are down there. You also want to check the resistance of the primary and secondary coils. You want to check the resistance of each spark plug wire, and you want to check the resistance and gap of each of your spark plugs to ensure that those are not the issue. 
Of course, you also need to check your supercharger tensioner assembly, including the spring idler pulley and pivot bushing and the condition of your belt. You wanna make sure that water is not getting onto that belt. Also, you wanna do a flow rate test and a pressure test on your fuel pump using a test rig. And you could also check the resistance of each of these injectors and you could take these injectors out, apply 12 volts to them, and clean them with a, a pulsing cleaner or just spray carb cleaner through them while applying voltage to the two terminals on each injector. Also, in my case, I removed my intercooler and I checked it. In my case, it was clean, but I cleaned it out again anyhow. And then something that's often overlooked is oil level. With your engine completely level, make sure that the fill level is in the middle of the dipstick. Of course, if you suspect you're having throttle body problems, you want to check your KSRD throttle trigger. I did conduct a test procedure for that, and the trigger itself was functioning normally within the proper bounds. And when diagnosing any EFI issue, you also want to make sure that you check all of your relays and you check the voltage of the power supply to the ECU itself. Now, obviously, if your ski has thrown some codes, that makes it fairly easy to diagnose. In my case, I did not have any codes, but I knew that the performance of the ski was not on par with what I expect. Um, the issue did just pop up out of nowhere. The ski was functioning normally, and then all of a sudden, you know, it just um, developed that, that slight hesitation. I did notice that if I accelerated very slowly, it went up to top speed with no problem. But if I tried to gun the throttle from a stop, every other time or so, it would have that hesitation. I'd have to let off and squeeze it again and then it would accelerate. So if you're having issues similar to that, check everything I mentioned and then do that test procedure for your Makuni EAC60 throttle body, which is located right there. This unit is non-serviceable supposedly. Um, so not much you could do if it comes back um, out of parameter, but replace it. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing for more exclusive jet ski content only on JD's Waterworld.